Hi guys, look, I'm just going to um, show you quickly how I like to load a log manually. Um, it's always a question that, that does get asked as we go through shows and demos and etc. So what I like to do is basically, I have my log bunk set up. I like to get my log up off the ground so that when I'm milling, I can actually get absolutely everything out of it. Um, and what I do with my log bunks is I mark the sides and get them parallel with my track. Um, that way I know that when my log does roll into place here, it is automatically lined up so that the centre runs parallel with the track. Um, in this case, the notches that I use, I usually do that for larger logs. I am using a smaller log this time, so all I do is I place a block in there which narrows my notch. Now I can also do that when dealing with tapered logs. Obviously not all logs are perfectly parallel. You have one end smaller than another and if you want to run with the center of the log with the track you would just put an extra block in there and it would lift the log up automatically for you. Um, I personally rather do that than move the tracks up or down to run parallel with the track because here in New Zealand I'm allergic to hard work and I just like to push on a flat plane and not up a hill. So, this log is relatively light, so normally I'd use my cant hooks to roll it in, but I'll just show you what I do here um, manually. And like I said, the skids would normally run out as far as you want. You can put as many logs on as you want. And I bridge it. And when I say bridge, it's just putting the board across here from the skids where the logs would sit on to the bunks where I want the log to be in the mill. So from there, all I do is just roll the log over. in the notch there. This one will come over to the notch. And that's it. And that will hold the log for you. From there, you move your little bridging planks aside and you're ready to mill. As simple as that. 